Today we're talking about a really cool hybrid bird discovery. The first time that this has ever been seen in the wild, it is a blue jay and a green jay had a hybrid offspring. They're saying maybe they should call it a gru jay, but I've heard a lot of stories about this. We're gonna go through this article that talks about it and I'm gonna give you my thoughts and what this might mean and what we might see in the future and some info about how this isn't really the first time this was ever seen, but it was the first time it was ever seen in the wild. So we'll start off by looking at this article from the University of Texas at Austin College of Natural Sciences by Mark Earhart. So here you can see the picture of the blue jay on the left, which many people are probably familiar with, the green jay on the right, which is a South Texas specialty species. So normally they live further south, but the range of South Texas that dips down, so you can find them there, so they're, they're a real specialty. And this is the hybrid offspring in the middle. So a really unique mix of the traits of both birds. Sometimes when you get a hybrid, it really emphasizes one species traits over the other. This is a good mix. It has the black um, kind of by the face like you would see in the green jay, the generally blue back like you would see in a blue jay. So it's uh, fascinating to see how those features kind of mixed together in this case. So to start off, I wanna mention that this article talks a lot about how this could be an example of an animal that exists because of recent changing patterns in the climate. Now I feel like with discoveries like this, they always wanna to try to make it some bigger overarching theme or some overarching meaning. Uh, when I don't know if you can necessarily say that this is just the result of changing climate because these birds do overlap somewhat. Now it may have more of an overlap because of range expansion, and that could be because of, of a number of different things such as development. Uh, but as far as green jays, they're pretty specific to like thorn scrub habitat. So if it got warmer up north, I don't think that they would just fully go up as far as they could with warm climate because they are habitat specific, not just dependent on temperature. Blue jays seem to be expanding a little more west, but they're more adaptable. So that could be because of development. They can live in more climates than I would say a green jay would be comfortable living in. So it's hard to really pin a reason on why this happened, but a lot of the articles are trying to say it's because of climate. So essentially it starts out by talking about how the two species are separated by what they say is 7 million years of evolution. So the idea behind this is that there was some J in the past, kind of hard to say how long ago in the past this bird existed, but then green J and blue J split off at some point, And there were probably many other things that branched off of that, but they're saying that this happened a really long time ago. So for them to meet up and have an offspring is really rare. Normally, if you see that it's where those branches are thought to have happened um, not as long ago. So it's pretty fascinating that it's been that long and that they were able to have a hybrid offspring. So it says, we think it's the first observed vertebrate that's hybridized as a result of two species both expanding their ranges due at least in part to climate change. Uh, this is Brian Stokes, a graduate student in ecology, evolution, and behavior at UT and the first author of the study. So they have this map down here showing the overlap of blue jays and green jays. So it says in the 1950s, the ranges of green jays extended just barely up from Mexico into South Texas, and the range of blue jays, a temperate bird living all across the eastern U.S., only extended about as far west as Houston. They almost never came into contact with each other. But since then, as green jays have pushed north and blue jays have pushed west, their ranges have converged around San Antonio, and that's where this bird was seen. So you can see on this map some of the overlap zone. Now, it's not to say that a stray bird, blue jay or green jay, didn't go into you know the other's habitat, and you potentially could have had this offspring. And I have to say, this is a really cool figure to see the data of where you find blue jays and green jays, and then you do have that overlapping pattern. So moving on, it says, as a PhD candidate studying green jays in Texas, Stokes was in the habit of monitoring several social media sites where birders shared photos of their sightings. It was one of several ways he could locate birds to trap, take blood samples for genetic analysis, and release unharmed back to the wild. And I think it's really fascinating that a PhD project is getting this much press for a discovery in it, kind of into the general public. Because a lot of the times when you do this research, the papers are very scientific and it's reaching maybe a more limited audience. So to have this level of science communication with it is really cool. So props to that study. That's awesome. Uh, basically, he was catching birds, releasing them back into the wild. One day he saw a grainy photo of an odd looking blue bird with a black mask and white chest. Posted by a woman in a suburb northeast of San Antonio, it was vaguely like a blue jay, but clearly different. The backyard bird invited Stokes to her house to see it firsthand. The first day we tried to catch it, but it was really uncooperative, Stokes said, but the second day we got lucky. 
Bird got tangled in a mist net, which essentially looks like a volleyball net set up with different pockets in it. So birds don't see it, they fly into it, get stuck. Researchers go in right away, get the bird out, they can do what they need to do and then let the bird go. But they were able to catch it in that mist net. They took a quick blood sample, banded its leg and then let it go. So oddly enough, it disappeared for a few years and then returned to the same woman's yard in June of 2025. So I'm assuming it took a lot of time to get this stuff analyzed and that's why it's coming out now, I'm assuming. He said, I don't know what it was, but it was kind of like random happenstance. If it had gone two houses down, probably it would have never been reported anywhere. Which goes to show this stuff probably happens more often than we think, but we have more people looking and, you know, with cell phones, you can take a picture really quick. So hopefully we'll see some of the stuff more often and be able to spot it. But I'm sure it happens out in the wild more than we realize. So it says, according to analysis by Stokes and his faculty advisor, the bird is a male hybrid offspring of a green jay mother and a blue jay father. That makes it like another hybrid that researchers in the 1970s brought into being by crossing a green jay and a blue jay in captivity. And that bird is taxidermied. And so they say it looks like the one that they saw in the wild. So this is not the first time that this hybrid has occurred. It has occurred in captivity, but this is the first time that we've seen it in the wild. So I feel like that's an important distinction that they did know that it was possible that this existed, but it is really awesome that it's the first time that it's been seen in the wild. So like they said, hybridization is probably way more common in the natural world than researchers know about because there's just so much inability to report these things happening. And it's probably possible in a lot of species that we don't just see because they're physically separated from one another and so they don't get the chance to try to mate. So it's really hard to say why this happened. It could be that there was a blue jay and a green jay kind of at the edge of their range. They didn't see another bird that looked like them, but they saw another jay and decided to have an offspring. Could have been that one was making an interesting vocalization that was more appealing to the bird of the other species. So it'll be interesting to see if we get more of these hybrids, but I remember there was a yellow-breasted chat oriole hybrid that was really random that happened. Uh, they were calling it the Choriel. This one they're calling the Gru Jay. So it's really interesting when you get these hybrid birds and it's cool to see what they look like. So it'll be interesting to see if maybe this bird will have offspring. And like I said, it's hard to say for sure what exactly caused it. They do think that it is somewhat range expansion though that caused these two to kind of meet for the first time but they are close enough where I feel like a vagrant bird could just go into the range and, you know, notice there's no other bird similar to it may have an offspring. So I feel like a lot of the articles always try to push some kind of like, what does this mean for the big picture? And sometimes it's just a one-off thing. So it's hard to say what this will mean. If we see a lot more of this happening, I think that'll give more evidence to the fact that it might be the range expansion. We'll see this more often, but we'll see. That's part of the fun of watching birds and learning about the discoveries as we get more info as we go. What do you think about the Gruje? Did you hear about it before this video? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Thank <laughs> you.